Hello, Entertainment Tonight. Today, I am with Mr. Brian Collins. Hi, Mr. Brian Collins. How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Joby, and you're on my show, Entertainment Tonight. And uh, a lot of people watch this show, so uh, I'm sure everyone's going to want to know who are you and what you do. And um, I've heard you, um, you uh, are a CEO for a website called Ovation.tv. Tell yes. us about that. That's my teaching half. I'm, I've been an actor for 30 some years and I've been a teacher. And this is my, that's my teaching website, basically. Uh, I do workshops on overcoming fear of public speaking. And I teach something that is called the actor's secret. It's called the ear prompter. And this site is mostly about the ear prompter. It's a way to give a presentation without notes, without memorizing, with very little preparation time. So actors wow. use it and ministers use it and politicians use it and public speakers use it. Oh, wow, I didn't, I didn't know that that many people use it. I was under the impression, most of us are under the impression only actors use it, you know? You don't really think CEOs or politicians do it, I, you know? I would think they only speak from their mind and say whatever, and they're prepared and they look so, so dominant and illustrious. And, and well, the thing is, in order to look so illustrious, <laughs> they have to be prepared and know what they're going to say mm -hmm. and not be sweating. So, um, and they have to know how they're going to prepare and know how they're going to give their presentation. So, and, and so they need to be good, and the way to be good is either, well, to memorize it all, which takes so much time, and mostly they don't have that time, right. or to use an ear prompter so their prep time is minimal, and they can give a presentation that looks like they've memorized it. So, so do you like working more with actors or with politicians and CEOs? Do you, is there a huge difference? Who do you, are the, who's more fun to work with? Actually. It's really a case-by-case -case basis. I've, mm -hmm. I've been teaching actors, and, some, and it was a, really a dull, boring class. You wouldn't expect that. And some of the CEOs uh, are just great and funny, and some of the ministers actually are great and funny. Oh. So it really is a case-by-case. -case. I can't categorize. They're all funny and some, some of the time, and they're all not funny some of the time. Right. And I've heard you've traveled all over the world. You've been to many countries, and um, you've gotten a chance to um, kind of have a taste and a feel of the cult different cultures. Tell us about the different countries you've visited. Well, as a, there was my Navy time. Uh -huh. That was a different thing. That was all over Southeast Asia. That okay. was uh, in the South China Sea, and in, um, in Taiwan, and in Hong Kong, and Japan, and the Philippines. Also in Africa and the Mediterranean, France. Oh. And then there's my working travels as okay. an actor and a public speaker. That's been pretty much all over Europe, primarily Canada, uh, Europe, Canada, and the U.S. basically for, for this kind of work. That is so exciting to be able to travel and meet different people and, and, and do different lectures. And you've helped politicians and CEOs in these different countries? Yes. In different Can you mention some of the politicians? No. <laughs> oh my god, why not? I'm so curious. Part of this, uh, this really gives uh, a speaker such an edge, mm -hmm. a huge edge in believability and connection that they don't want anybody else to know they're using it, yeah. and they don't want anybody else to use it. Yeah. So they won't give me, they won't let me use their name in testimonials. I don't blame them. I think you right. know it is an edge, and if that's how they want it to be, I'd love to get testimonials from them, but um, they don't wish that, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Can you mention some of the actors you've worked with? No. No. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, we're just gonna leave it at that then. <laughs> um, let's see. What about your family? Your personal life? Are you married? Single? Married guy. Married late, age of 53. What? Yeah, I was a retard. It took me a long time. Um, but born and raised in Chicago, uh, went to the Naval Academy, was then in the Navy for nine years thereafter, mostly as a submarine or part-time as an advisor and a teacher. Oh, you were in the ocean, inside the ocean. Yeah, down, down under. Down under? Down oh, under. my God. Auga, auga, yeah. <gasps> Some hairy, hair-raising tales there. But... Uh, yeah, spent a lot of time in the Navy and ended up uh, near San Francisco at my last tour and mm -hmm. uh, met some models who introduced me to their agency and I started modeling and acting, got into a world premiere play in San Francisco and, and, uh, and away it went. So I've been acting for and modeling for 35 years and, and teaching for about 37 or 38 counting the Navy. Wow, that is so impressive, Thir over 35 years. Before you were born, actually. Before I was born. Yeah. I wish I can 
be your age one day and be, have a long career, such a long successful career as you have. If you're lucky, you will be my age one day. I, I hope so. I hope so. Do you have any children? No Speaking, kids. Started, no kids? started too late for them. Too late. Would, mm -hmm. you, would you have liked to have kids? I don't know. I really like other people's kids. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's easier. Huh? And then when I'm done, I go home and they go home. I know. So, yeah, it's over. Yeah, having fed them lots of sugar and making them hyper. <laughs> Let the parents take care of them now. Yeah, the parents. Um, tell us about some of the awards you won. I hear, uh, I see that you've um, won some golden angels or golden, um, uh, golden multiple golden awards, something like that. Well, it is not the Academy Awards nor the Screen Actors <laughs> Guild Awards, but it's, it, these are awards given uh, for corporate films, industrial films. About I've seen those. ninety-five percent <laughs> of the films in the world are corporate, not the movies you're looking at, not TV, but corporate, corporate company I've films, how-to, new product, safety, those kinds of things. So so I was uh, submitted on some of those and I won some awards on on those films. You know, so, like, like the Albertsons, like the grocery store yeah. uh, training videos? Yeah, and training videos, just like that. Just Albertsons like that. Or, or small companies or large companies, Sony, IBM, those kinds of, of corporations. So they all make films all the time. You told us earlier that you went to Paris once and you spoke French. You know, you did the intro of your speech and you were speaking in French. Can you speak some French to us? Like, say hello. Parlez vous français, senior? No, I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember? Yeah, I, uh, I had to. I was on a, a six week speaking tour throughout Europe. It was uh, Norway and Sweden and France, Italy, Spain. Wow. You know, Germany. And. After the first two countries, I got bored. It was about an hour, an hour and a quarter presentation. So I decided to spice it up by speaking in their language, at least for the first three, four, five minutes. So I would write down what I wanted to say in English, and then the concierge at that hotel would translate it for me, and I'd record it. And then I would do the first three or four minutes in that language. And that was challenging. It made me sweat a little bit. <clears throat> but I was bored, so it was a good thing. Wow. Uh, and it worked perfectly well. I, I got to establish rapport. With, uh, with my audience. And usually they were the 80, 90 top industrialists, corporate people in the country. Mm -hmm. So it was good to establish rapport with them as it is with any audience. Uh, and that got, got us off on the right foot. So Great. Um, just, curious, just out of curiosity, have you worked, ever worked in Mexico, any Spanish soap operas? Have you ever taught any of the Spanish novellas how to use the ear prompter? I've taught Spanish speaking people how to use the ear prompter. I don't know if they've ended up on, in soaps or not in Mexico. Yeah, but, yeah, I've taught them, and some of these people, I, they're so multilingual, they're perfect in Spanish, perfect in English, and you know, they really have a, a future because there's a lot of requirements for Spanish speakers or multilingual people in commercials um, and, and corporate films and soaps. So, yeah. so having that in your bag is good, being multilingual, it's great. Great, oh my God. So you've done so many things, you've been on TV shows, you go all over the world teaching CEOs and politicians about how to use the ear prompter. I think that's totally great. And without you, probably a lot of people wouldn't know wouldn't be as successful as they are now. Well, in my dreams, I like to think that. Yes, <laughs> I have helped them. You know, that's what you want to do as a teacher. So, yeah, I've, and I've enjoyed it. Too. Thank you so much, Brian, a for pleasure. being here. Thanks for having me. Bye, everyone.